one of the things I thought would have happened with COVID-19, one of the things that I, I thought would have happened with this latest lockdown that if you're in Quebec or Ontario or maybe other parts of the world you're experiencing, one of the things I really thought would have happened is that our lives would have slowed down a bit. You know, so many of us in our lives, we are just incredibly busy. You know, for some of us, we're, you know, we get up, get to work, go home for work, prepare dinners, you know, get to sports practice before COVID-19, obviously. All these things we, we bring into our lives and every day they always seem so jam-packed. And I really thought that with COVID-19, with the reality that we could not do so many of the things that we've done, that our lives would just calm down. But I don't know about you, but I know that's not the case for me. I know that instead of doing the things I did before COVID-19, before a lockdown, before, you know, the realities that set in, instead of doing those things, I'm doing new things in their place. So instead of, you know, getting my kids up early to get ready for school, you know, I'm getting my kids up, well, a little bit later and for online school. You know, instead of making their lunches every day, uh, you know, I'm making sure I'm home so I can tell them how to use a toaster when they're not too sure. You know, instead of going to the grocery store every night or few nights to make sure I have stuff to make for dinner, I'm trying really hard to plan so that I don't have to go very often. You know, instead of sports practices or anything else, I'm filling it with Netflix. All these instead ofs really haven't slowed us down at all. And the truth is that as so many of us have in the past and are continuing to do in the present reality, we are filling our lives with all kinds of stuff. And as our lives get busy, as things start moving, it makes our lives so very hard to figure out at times. It makes our vision so very murky. It makes it hard for us to see what's really going on with our emotions, with our mental health, with our spirituality, with all kinds of things. It's hard to see what God is doing because our lives are so clouded with all the stuff that we have going on. And for so many of us, we actually really want to see clearly. I think for all of us, we want to see clearly. We want to see ourselves clearly. We want to see the world around us clearly. We want to be able to know what to do in any kind of situation. Then things come our way, we want to be ready for them. But for so many of us, our lives are so full and murky that we just can't see through the day to day to see what we need to see. And that's why I want to talk to you about rhythm number two, stillness. Because if we incorporate stillness in our lives, we will find that everything that gets worked up, everything that we get doing and all the busyness we have can settle down to the bottom and we can start to see and hear clearly. But if we're not still, if we don't take the time to do that, all that stuff just keeps resurfacing and we're never going to get to that place we want to get to. For 2021, my desire for all of us, if you're watching this online, is to take the time to incorporate into our lives, to bring into our lives or to continue, if we've already been doing it, practices that develop a rhythm for our lives. In Days gone by, the Christian church would call this a rule of life. What are things that you plan to do so that you can experience God in the most amazing way possible? In John's gospel, Jesus tells his followers that he came to bring life and life in all of its fullness. The purpose of having a rule of life or to develop healthy rhythms is so that we can experience that life in all of its fullness that Jesus offers. And last week we talked about how scripture is a key part of that. Because we need to find a time, a place, and make a plan to engage with the words that God has already spoken to us 
and to see what he has to say to us today through them. And now I want to talk about stillness. Stillness is one of those things that even as you hear that word, you might be wondering, what exactly does that mean? Well, what I mean by stillness is stillness, being still. I know, you should never define a word by the word. But when we choose to be still, when we embrace stillness as a rhythm of our lives, we take time to slow down, we take time to settle, and we choose to disengage from all those things that make our lives murky and cloudy. And the idea of stillness is something that is talked about throughout Scripture. In fact, it is something that God invites us to practice so that we can know Him and experience Him even more than we do in our daily lives already. Throughout the story of God's people in the Old Testament, there are multiple times where people have been told to be still and just wait to see what God's going to do. And one of those times is in the Exodus story. Those of us who may be familiar with it, we know the story that the people of God, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt at one point. And as they were slaves, they were tortured and they were miserable and life was not the way it was supposed to be. It's not that fullness of life that God would invite them to, a promised land that they had been hoping for. And so in their misery, God hears their cries and he raises up someone, a Israelite, who was actually living in Egypt as one of the adopted Pharaoh's family. Moses is raised up and invited to be a leader to them. And as much as he doesn't want to do it, he does. And he gets to the point where he does lead them, and there are these amazing stories of how God intervened in their moments so that they could leave Egypt. And they've gotten to the point where they've been traveling through the desert and they actually crossed a sea, like the sea parted, and they were able to walk right through it. And after they cross the sea, they're going to go and rest a while. But what ends up happening is they realize that the Egyptian king, the, the, the rulers of that time, know what's happening and they're continuing to pursue them. And so the Israelites go to Moses and say, why did you take us out of there? We are going to be slaughtered. This is going to be awful. We didn't want to leave Egypt. I mean, as horrible as it was, we at least had a roof over our head. You've just made everything worse. And Moses, I don't know how calm he was in the moment. I don't know how frustrated he might have been with the Israelites. As you see in the story of Exodus, he gets frustrated sometimes because those Israelites are pretty frustrating. I don't know what his emotions were. But it comes to this point, after the Israelites have said, hey, you should have left us alone. They shouldn't have done this. Why did you take us out of this? They've seen the sea part. They've seen God do these plagues. They've done these, all these amazing things have happened. And they're like, you know what? This is horrible. And Moses says this in Exodus 14, verse 13. It says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Well, why is he saying that? Well, because they are afraid. They're terrified. They're terrified because they left a certain life, and their life now seems to be getting even worse because they think they're going to die. It says, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. God is going to take care of it, Moses is saying. Moses, who is, is for the Israelites, he's like the spokesperson for God. He is the one who communicates and connects with God and shares what God is saying to the Israelites. He is invited by God to free them from slavery, and he does so to the point where they cross a sea that no one should be able to cross on foot. And they're still afraid because they know that the Pharaoh, the, the king of Egypt, still is coming after them and is going to kill them. And Moses says, don't worry. God will fight your battle, but you have to do something. Be still. 
When we have things going on in our lives, and we have many things going on in our lives, let's be honest. When we have things going on in our lives that we're not too happy about, maybe we feel pressure from work. Maybe we feel pressure from home. Maybe we feel pressure in relationships. Maybe we just feel pressure from the internet because social media is telling us we're not doing enough. Or maybe we're feeling pressure from the news because we see how horrible the world seems to be these days. When we have all these things going on in our lives, the thing we usually do is worry about it. We fret. We get all turned up inside out. We all get upset about it. We try to do something to fix the situation. We try to make it different than it is, and usually we're not successful. The Israelites were faced with a situation where they see everything that's not going to go well for them. And so what do they do? They say, why did you put us in this situation, Moses? This is your fault. They passed the blame. And he says, you know what? All you got to do is stop. All you got to do is stop. And God will take care of this. I'm going to fight your battle. So many of us forget that God is with us. That is one of the amazing things that we should know as followers of Jesus. We just came through Christmas, and in Christmas, we usually make the point of saying that, you know, Jesus was called Emmanuel, God with us. And those of us who are Christians, those of us who follow Jesus, we should know that Jesus was God with us. And that when he left us, he said you wouldn't be alone that he would leave a companion, the Holy Spirit, to be with us. And he would never leave us. So God is still with us. So many of us who have so many things that are causing our lives to be cloudy and murky and hard to see, sometimes we forget that God is with us. And one of the ways that we can practice awareness of God being with us is to be still, to embrace a rhythm of stillness in a hectic world. When we embrace stillness, we take time to move away from all those things that are distracting, that are making us murky and cloudy and unsure and busy and, and tired. When we embrace that, we start to see things clearly. We start to see God at work. Stillness is one of the rhythms we need to build into our lives to embrace that life in all of its fullness that Jesus offers. The authors of the Psalms would say this many times in different ways. They would invite people to be still. In Psalm 46, The author writes this, and remember that Psalms is, is poetry, it is music, it is worship. And this piece of worship is meant to help us, the people who are hearing it, slow down, be still, and know. So the author begins with this, as God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging. So the author is reminding us that God is our strength, our refuge. That when we are close to God, these things can be happening, the world can be falling apart, but he is still our strength and our refuge. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar and kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought to the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. When we are faced with tumultuous times, like so many of us are right now, when we have the st stress of just daily life, of just living, when we have the realities of a virus, that though there is a vaccine, we're still living in the not yet time where not everybody's vaccinated. Though there's realities of uncertainty with jobs, though there's realities of uncertainty in our relationships, in the midst of all these things that might feel like they're falling apart, the Lord is your refuge and your strength. Your refuge as in you can go to him and find peace. He is our God and he is with us. God says to us, be still and know that he is God. The thing is that when we get so busy, when we get so busy doing, 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 having too much to do, uncertainty and worry and all these things, when we get to that space, usually the thing we forget is that he is God and we are not. Many of us are always trying to fix the problem, try and make the problems go away, try and resolve all the conflict that we have, trying to make things better in every way we can, and there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes we try to do it so much in our own strength, we forget that he is God and we are not. And we cannot find peace, we cannot experience clarity when we forget who God is and who we are. Because that's just another addition into our murky life. But when we can be still, all those things can settle and we can start to see clearer. It might not be that everything is clear, but we get a better vision of what is going on. When we practice stillness, we can experience the life in all of its fullness Jesus invites us to experience. When we are still, things settle. So how do you, in the busy world that you're in, the busy world that I'm in, the busy world that we're all experiencing, where, you know, right now, probably as you're watching this, maybe you're on Facebook and you're getting notifications of something, like somebody liked something or somebody posted something, or in this world where, you know, all these different things are happening and it's so busy and we don't know how to be still, how do we be still? Because if stillness is going to bring clarity to our lives, do we not want that? We need to still our souls, and this is how you can do it. And everybody's different, but here's, here's what I need to do. I need to separate. You are a busy person. Maybe you've got a young kid at home, and you know, we all know young kids can be very needy. In fact, that's all they are. They're needy. You love them, they love you, but they are needy. And they're meant to be. So they need you to feed them, they need you to change them, they need you to wash them, they need you to play with them, they need you to read to them, they need you to love them. And you could feel like you're giving all your self to their needs. Is there a time where you can separate? Meaning, is there a time where they're not needing you? Maybe you are someone who is very busy at work. In fact, work isn't a nine to five thing for you, especially now because you work from home. Work seems to be almost a 24 hour affair that keeps going on and on because somebody always needs something from you. And so your phone is buzzing or your emails are coming in and you feel like you're always working. Can you separate? Maybe your life isn't busy. Maybe your life is actually quite calm but you fill your life with so many things so that that calmness that quietness that aloneness doesn't feel lonely and so maybe it's binge watching shows maybe it's being out with friends maybe well online with friends now maybe it's on the phone all the time maybe maybe you're just filling your life with noise so you don't feel alone when 
we're constantly doing, when we're constantly experiencing, when we're constantly hearing, we lose sight of what God might be showing us because our lives become so murky, we can't see through it properly. So we need to separate from those things practice of the ancient church and the church still today has done is silence and solitude to experience stillness. Silence as in we quiet the noise in our lives. Maybe that means turning off your phone for a period of time each day. One of the things that I do and I have done is I put a timer on my phone. In most smartphones now, they are set up in such a way that you can basically put them in sleep mode so you don't get notifications at certain times. I do that. It might drive some of you crazy because then I don't know that you've called or texted me or whatever, but I do that because I need to separate. If I was just on my phone all the time, I would never take time to be still. If I'm always just watching something on television or, or listening to music or oh, there's something always on, it'll never be quiet. So I need to separate from those things. For me, what works is to be out in nature. So sometimes it means going for a walk and finding a place just to stop. Stop where there's not too much noise, maybe there's not too many people, and just be there for a while and listen. When our lives are so full and so busy, we can't see clearly, so we need to separate. So I want to encourage you to do this. I want to encourage you to find a time where you can be still. Maybe, like I said, you have a young kid at home. So, it, you know, they get up at 6, which is off, I know. And from 6 till basically 7, you're always on. You're always feeding, changing, reading, whatever. There's always something to do because your baby needs you but you do have time other than that. What if you took 20 minutes in whatever time where you're not busy worrying about your family and carve it out and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go to this room in my house or in my backyard or this place and be still with God. I'm not going to have music playing. I, I'm not going to you know, be distracted by my phone. I'm going to put my phone away. I'm just going to be still. And I'm going to listen. I will talk to God, I will pray, and I will just be quiet. And I'll be alone, and I'll be silent. Maybe you're just so busy at work, but can you carve out a time in your day? The truth is that all of us are busy. But maybe in your work you could take a break. A novel idea, I know. Maybe you get a lunch hour, and so maybe that means you turn off your computer and you step away from it for half an hour, and you just be still. Many of us who are working from home, we find it so hard because it's like, your, it's your bedroom, and then it's your office, and then it's your lunchroom, and then it's, you know, but it's also your house, and, and all these things kind of muddle together. But can we separate them? Can we find a space that is just meant for you and God? So find a time and find a space that could be your place for you and God. For me, one of the places that I have is we have this little um, front lawn. If you've been to my home, you've seen it where it's, it's elevated. It's above the street. And it comes out from, and you come out of the, the bedroom and you have this, this, this front area. And I love to sit there and be quiet. Sometimes it's not so quiet because there's noise around, but I can still be still because I can be aware of God and myself in those moments. If there's always noise and busyness in our lives, we will never hear God. And if we desire to experience the life and all the fullness that Jesus offers, we need to be still, we need to be silent, and we need to be alone. And for a lot of us, it's hard to be alone because we're lonely. But being in solitude is not loneliness. It's being present with God. Can you find a time 
and find a place in your home where you live, and in everybody's home is different, that you could make it your space to be still with God. Maybe it means you put plants there because nature is sometimes very helpful for you. Maybe it means that you paint that area a certain color so that it feels calming. And it's separate from everything else that you have going on in your home. If you want to embrace stillness so that things can settle in your life and you can start to see clearer, it takes time. But it needs a space. Find a place in your home, in your life. Maybe your home is too busy. Maybe there's a park nearby. Find a place and practice. If you embrace stillness in your life at least once a week, I can almost guarantee to you, I can almost guarantee to you that your life, not that everything will go away and you'll be less busy, but your life will have clarity because things will be able to settle because you've given it time and you'll have a place to be connected with God and to embrace his life in all its fullness that he would offer you. If you choose to embrace stillness, if you choose to carve out a time and have a place that is for you and God, I can almost guarantee you that when you experience some of the challenges in your life, that you can experience peace in them. Because you will learn to be present with God in the moments that are challenging and to trust that the battle belongs to the Lord. All we have to do is be still. I want to encourage you to embrace stillness in your life. I want to encourage you to find a time and a place this week where you can spend 15, 20, 30 minutes, even longer, longer the better, to just be present with God to not be worrying about your phone, to not have distractions, to just be still. I'm going to pray for you and for me that we can find the time and the place to be still and know He is God. God, you are my God. You're not just my God, you are our God. You are the God of all creation that you spoke and all of creation came into being. And while I will never pretend to understand how that happened, I know you did it. And I trust that. And not only you are the God of creation, you are the God who rescues. You are the God who redeems, who makes wrong things right. And just as you rescued your people, the Israelites, from slavery, from oppression, you are rescuing us through Jesus Christ. That Jesus, through your death and your resurrection, we are rescued. We no longer have to live a life that feels like slavery and is slavery. Slavery to things that are not life-giving. Slavery to sin. But instead, God, with you as our Lord, we recognize that the battle belongs to you. And that in the busyness, in the murkiness, and the challenges of life, when we can be still and know you are God, we can see what you are doing. We can see your rescue, your redemption. Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray that we can experience stillness so that we can experience you in our busy, busy lives. Holy Spirit, I pray that this week we take the time to be present with you as you are with us always, but we take that time and not have any distractions in it. Remind us, Spirit, that we are to be present with you and to be still and help us to carve out that time and be present with you. Jesus, you promise us life in all of its fullness, and I want us to experience that life. Help us to embrace this rhythm of stillness. Help us to be people who are not always busy and distracted, but people who can see clearly because we've taken the time to let things settle and to be present with you in stillness. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.